In this lesson, we are going to talk about polar coordinates. So we are used to the rectangular coordinates, the xy coordinate plane. Well, this is an alternative to graph some types of curves. And so polar coordinates uh, really lend themselves very well with trigonometry. Now, when you are plotting points using polar coordinates, the R stands for the radius and the theta stands for the angle measure. So think of this as radius and this is the angle measure. Now it is very customary to write that uh, point um, in radians so you won't see it in degrees as often. So what do you do when you graph it? So you will notice that on a polar, polar grid, there's no X and Y anymore. There are rings that stand for how far out you are, your radius. So it's very circular in nature. And then we are going to go two out on the pi over four. Remember, that's 45 degrees line. So we have gone two out on the 45 degree line. So that's the point two pi over four. So let's just practice plotting some of these. So we've got uh, four of them here to plot. Now, if the r theta, in this case, our first one here, uh, our r, I'm gonna write it a little bigger here, is three, our theta is pi over two. So you have to know where pi over two is. So here's pi over two, and we're gonna go one, two, from the center, one, two, three out. And so that would be our point. So you're going to go in a pi over 2 direction, 3 out. So that's 3 pi over 2. The next one is 2 pi over 3. Now, many times what they show you here is 1, 2, 3, 4. So think about the fact if we divide 90 into 1, 2, 3 wedges, each one of those is 30. So they didn't show the 45 mark on this one. And um, different graph paper will mark different things. So in this one, pi over 3 is 60. We're going to go 2 out from center. And then we're going to be at the 60. So that's how you graph this one, 2 pi over 3. Now, this is the first time we have seen negative 2 pi over 6. So I'm talking about this, negative 2 pi over 6. So we are going to go on the pi over 6 line. Remember, that's 30 degrees. So this is the pi over 6 line. But instead of going forward 2, instead, all you do is go backwards 2. And so we would land right here. So let me say that again. So we go on the pi over 6 line, the 30 degree line, and instead of go forward, we go backwards. So that's what it means to be negative. So that is negative 2 pi over 6. So it's more directional than anything else. And then we've got a uh, few more here. Uh, so these, are, these bottom ones here are some just unusual locations. Negative pi over 6 would be negative 30. So remember, here was positive 30. Here is negative 30. But you still go forward on that three uh, rings, 1, 2, 3. And then 9 pi over 4, um, think about if you counted pi over 4s were the 45s. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 gets you all the way around. So 9 pi over 4 is actually the 45 line. Now we don't really see it very well on this graph, 
but we're going to go two rings out on that line. So just tuck yourself perfectly in between the uh, 30 and the 60. So right there. Okay. So that's how you would graph it on a polar grid. The uh, rings reflect how far you are going to go out your radius and then you just have to find the line that matches up with the unit circle values that we have learned. So there's your first example. We need to know how to convert things from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. And it's all about things we already know. Um, if we go out a certain measure in R and we are at a certain degree measure, if we wanted to actually find the exact location we land as terms of X and Y, um, the X would be related to our cosine, so it's R cosine theta. The y is related to our sine. It's r sine theta. And that goes completely with Sokotoa and everything we know. The x has always been related to our cosine. The y has always been related to our sine. So let's practice writing um, this point on the polar uh, grid 3 pi over 2 as rectangular. So what you want to do is you want to write down the formula for both x and y. So x is going to be r uh, cosine theta and y is going to be r sine theta. Now the first thing I would suggest doing is replacing the r and the theta, remember this is r and this is theta, into the formulas. So x is going to be 3 times the cosine of pi over 2. And y is going to be 3 times the sine of pi over 2. So now we're going to use those unit circle values to help us. So um, cosine at, at pi over 2, um, you may recall, on the unit circle, that is the point 0, 1. So the cosine is 0 and the sine is 1. And now we're just going to simplify that. So our x is 0, our y is 3, so we are at the point 0, 3. So if we go to this, the point 0, 3 on the um, xy plane, or if we go to the point 3 pi over 2 on the, or on the polar plane, we are going to get to the same location. Now, um, let's practice one more time, except this time I would like to do. Uh, we, this one is very, very similar to what we just did. So let's skip that one and let's jump to 4b. So our x is going to be uh, r cosine theta. Our y is going to be r sine theta. So let's plot the values in. Remember this is r and this is theta. So that's going to be negative 1 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3. And this is going to be negative 1 times the sine of 2 pi over 3. Now 2 pi over 3 on the unit circle is the point negative 1 half square to 3 over 2. So that's a 3 there. So um, let's plot those in. So that's negative 1 times negative 1 half. And this is negative 1 times square root of 3 over 2, which gets us to 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2. So that point, 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2, is the same as the polar coordinates negative 1, 2 pi over 3. Now why is that? Well, if I have a ring that's 1 in radius, and instead of staying on the 2 pi over 3 line, if I stay on the 
I go in the opposite direction down here, that's exactly where you would land. So there you go. So here are some really good formulas, so make sure you copy these down. If you want to find the x and you have the polar, x is our cosine theta, y is our sine theta, the radius squared is x squared plus y squared, so sometimes that's how we could find the radius if we know x and y, and the tangent of theta is y over x, so one little thing we're going to add right here is that theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. Sorry, my, my pencil's not working really good. Let me try that one more time. Yeah, yeah that works a little better. So uh, make sure you have those formulas down. That will allow us to go from rectangular to polar, from polar to rectangular. So let's use that knowledge to convert the rectangular coordinates to the polar coordinates. Now the answers are kind of there to show you later, but let's do the math first. So remember, this is your xy, that's rectangular. For polar, we need r and theta. So the formula for r that we have is r squared is x squared plus y squared. Just good old Pythagorean. So uh, we know that r squared is 3 squared plus 3 squared. So r squared is 9 plus 9, or 18. So r is the square root of 18. Now since 18 is 9 times 2, just write that as 3 radical 2. And you'll see that's where they've showed us right there. So how far out have we gone to get to the point 3, 3? Well, you've gone to a hypotenuse of 3 radical 2. Okay, now let's find our theta. Our theta... Goodness, I'm having reading issues today. <laughs> our theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. Now, our calculator is only so intelligent so if you do use a calculator, you're going to have to uh, do a little bit of thinking of how that's going to be uh, radians. Um, otherwise, just round to the nearest degree, and you have to be aware of what quadrant it's landed you in. So 3, 3 is in the first quadrant. So if we take the inverse tangent of 3 over 3, which is 1, the calculator tells us that that's 45 degrees. Now, I don't want your answer in um, degrees. Please make sure you know to rewrite that. Remember, you can always tack on a pi and put it over 180, which is pi over 4. Okay, now write it as a polar, so that is the radius length of 3 radical 2 and the angle measure of pi over 4. So there's example 5. Here's some formulas that you um, need to know. If you want to find the distance between two polar coordinates, it is reminiscent of the distance formula, but it's also related to the law of uh, cosines a little more than because it's not, you know, sitting perfectly in some kind of right triangle. So you'll see this little piece and part that's related very much to our um, uh, you'll see the, the law of cosines sitting there. 
So uh, here is example six. Now you always want pi uh, or theta one, I'm sorry, to be the larger of the two angles. Okay, so make sure you always, uh, for this formula to work, make your theta one, r one, your larger angle. Okay, so let's plop into the formula. So our larger of the angle, two angles, two pi over three is bigger than pi over three. And so this one is going to be r one theta one. And this one is going to be r two theta two. Okay. And let's go ahead and plot this information into the formula. So r one squared is going to be four squared r2 squared is going to be 2 squared. Now, if those things happen to be negative, which they are not, please put them in parentheses. And then we have minus 2 r1 times r2 times the cosine of the subtraction of the two angles. So 2 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is 1 pi over 3. If they don't have common denominators, just get yourself common denominators. Now let's actually simplify this. Please be mindful of your order of operations. So we've got that 16 plus 4 minus 2 times 4 times 16 is negative 16. The cosine of pi over 3. So now remember, cosine is the x on the unit circle. Pi over 3 is 60. The x at that point is 1 half. Following order of operations, we still have to do that. Half of 16 is 8. 16 plus 4 is 20, 20 minus 8 is 12. The distance between them is the square root of 12. Don't leave it like that if it can reduce a little bit. 12 is 4 times 3. I can reduce that by taking the square root of 4, but leaving the 3 behind. So that is it. your uh, last example. A distance formula if your points are written in polar form. The homework is followed right here and it looks very much like the uh, problems that you see. Uh, we're just going to do problems 1 through 12. So there you go. Enjoy.